What the hell happened to that guy's head? I'm Robbie from the Nerdy Nomicon, and this is the new batch. So the Orville is the first of what I'm going to call the first two Star Trek reboots this season. I mean, it's not actually Star Trek per se, but close enough. I'd also like to take this opportunity to apologize to any hardcore Trekkers out there for that comment. Trekkers... that's the appropriate vernacular, right? It's not Trekkies anymore? I'm pretty sure it's Trekkers. Hey, quick question. Is it Trekkies or Trekkers? I say Trekkies. You say Trekkies. Yeah, I say Trekkies, but technically I guess both of them are right because some people say Trekkies, some people say Trekkers. Okay, so regardless of whatever you want to label it as, this is a new dramedy on the Fox Network. Now, by the time you're seeing this, they should be about three episodes in with the fourth episode premiering tonight. And I'm going to be very honest with you, this show had me... From day one. It's created and starring Seth MacFarlane. You know, the dude from Family Guy and American Dad and A Thousand Ways to Die in the West. Well, this is his attempt at taking on the Star Trek-esque space exploration genre, which he's been a big fan of ever since he was a little kid. Okay, now I'm going to be honest with you, as much as I love Seth MacFarlane in this, I almost think the show would be better if it was starring Ralph Garman. Nine, 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 nine! So much nine, it's almost ten! Okay, I get it, but I stand by it. Now, this is a genre that has already been subverted and parodied to death. Now, we've already had Galaxy Quest, which was essentially a love letter to Star Trek TOS. And does anybody else remember Space Cases from way back in the day on Nickelodeon? Kaylee from Firefly was on that show, man! But this is a different animal entirely from all of those other shows. See, the Orville handles the subversion genre with a little bit more class and maturity than its predecessors. You're nobody's first choice for this job, but we have 3,000 ships to staff and we need captains. Can I have one of these mints? Those are marbles. We're giving you one last chance. Yeah, I said it. Class and maturity. From the guy that brought us Peter Griffin. McFarlane stars as Captain Ed Mercer, who, after having a rough year after witnessing his wife cheating on him with some blue dude who I'm pretty sure flat out bricked out of the top of his head, is now in command of the exploratory vessel, the Orville. His top officers range from the human variety with Dr. Claire Finn, Lieutenant John Malloy, and Lieutenant John Lamar, to various alien life forms who have joined a Federation-like organization. Chief amongst them being Chief Security Officer Alara Katan, a 23-year-old Zelayan who, due to her planet's extreme gravitational pull, has super strength in Earth's gravity. There's also Lieutenant Commander Bordas, who comes from a single-gendered species, all dudes, by the way. This character seems to be almost like a mix between Spock and Worf. And finally, we have Isaac, the science and engineering officer from Kalon 1, a legendarily racist planet who views all other life forms as inferior. Now, this guy has got to be fun at parties. And I'm pretty sure he's a robot, which is fine because I, you know, seen that done in Saga, so why not? Now, the reason that I'm able to list off so many facts about this crew is because even in the very first episode, even in the very first half hour, it is already chuck full of lore. And not just lore dumping for the sake of lore dumping either. This is presented to us easily and digestible in a fashion that makes me actually care about the characters immediately. This first hour had me more invested in not only knowing who everyone is and where they come from, but actually hungering for more. And that is without even getting to the main plot of the episode, which I'm not going to discuss here. I think a lot of the episodes of The New Batch were probably going to end up jumping into spoilers, but honestly, I feel that this show is better reviewed without them. Because basically, to review this show, you don't need them. This show is already so impressively character-driven, and it is also so impressive tonally and exposition-wise that the story almost takes a backseat to meeting everybody. The pilot of any TV series really should serve more as an orientation than anything else, and the Orville does this masterfully. So like I said, three episodes have already aired. We're generally only going to be talking about the first episode on this series, but I just have to tell you, the first three episodes, this is only getting better. 
they're dealing with such incredibly deep subject matter in a way that, well, I haven't seen it done this well in a very, very long time. Already they're dealing with themes of entitlement, of species superiority, and gender identity. All in three episodes. On primetime TV. In a sci-fi show. In a comedy sci-fi show. So, I don't know what more I can ask for for this show. I anticipate it's only going to be getting better. And that's the rub. Because, as we talk about on the Nerdy Nomicon podcast, there's a thing called the Curse of the Palmer. See, if I end up watching a show in the first season and liking it, there is a 95 to 98% chance that that show is going to get cancelled. I miss you, Selfie. I miss you, Constantine. We'll never forget you, the river. Carnival, you left us too soon. Granted, you made it to two seasons, but I'm still counting it. Point Pleasant. I think that from A to Z was cursed right from the word get-go, but I still liked it. Now, a lot of those shows you may not have heard of, others you're probably cursing me for right now. And I'm sorry, but I'm there with you, man. They were good shows. And this is a good show. The amount of heart that it's dealing with this deep subject matter is outstanding. The acting is maybe not Emmy-worthy, but better than most of the shows that we've got. The lighthearted comedy really kind of breaks up the deep themes that they're tackling. Even with Aliens, they're showing more humanity than 90% of what's on television right now. And to me, that's a good thing because it helps to resonate the messages and the themes that they're trying to bring forth. So that's it, man, my review of the Orville. I really, really want you guys to check this out and let us know in the comments section what you guys think. I love it and I can't wait for it to get canceled. And I'm sorry in advance. Don't forget to check back with us on Mondays and Thursdays. That's right, two release days for you guys. Two of them. There are a lot of shows. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment, and don't forget to check out the Nerdy Nomicon podcast. Chances are we're going to be talking about a lot of these shows in there, too. And probably with a lot more depth and a lot more cursing. Kind of do that a lot over there. Sorry, Mom. Mom, I'm 30 years old. You can't make me wash my mouth out with soap. Fine.